The thing that's the hardest about this whole piece is the, the coda. Paul Barnes has spent months practicing for a new piece he commissioned from a favorite composer. There, but yeah, these two pages are by far the hardest. Barnes is a piano virtuoso who splits his time between teaching at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and performing classical concerts across the globe. And this is the section that Philip let me add all of those wonderful octaves here. Uh... The Philip to whom he refers is none other than the world-renowned composer Philip Glass, widely regarded as one of the most influential composers working today. Beautiful epiphany chord there. The two met by chance 24 years ago on an airplane leaving Lincoln, Nebraska. On that flight, as I was sitting down, I saw Philip Glass get on the plane. And the seat next to him was empty. And so I just, in a fit of divine inspiration, hopped over the aisle. And before I knew it, I'm talking to one of my favorite people on the planet, Philip Glass. They've been on and off collaborators ever since, forming a friendship through music. Barnes first commissioned a piece from Glass in 2004. This latest commission is a bit different. Long known for his innovative and experimental symphonies, film scores, and operas, this is Glass's first piano quintet and his first piece inspired by a Byzantine chant. The music that he gave me to work with was very interesting to work with. The uh, harmonic changes are very suppressed. It's not what we hear in modern music. And frankly, I didn't know whether he was gonna like it or not. I had no idea how he was going to be able to deal with that. When I got the manuscript in the mail and played through the first way that he dealt with the theme, I was just stunned because it was so beautiful. Oh, I still remember the first time I played this. I was so happy. While Glass may have had some critics in earlier years, he remains in high demand. In 2018, he was presented with a Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award at the Kennedy Center Honors. And getting on Glass's schedule is a challenge. Glass is on a whirlwind trip to the Midwest from his home in New York for the world premiere of his latest work, but not before a jam-packed day of rehearsals and finessing. If I were to redo that today, I would put in a full horn section. Oh, I see. And a lot of introductions. I want to introduce my student, Sean. I want to introduce you to Philip Glass. This is the UNL Orchestra. This is Philip Glass. <laughs> In some ways, they are an unlikely pair. 82-year-old Glass is soft-spoken, measured, yet deliberate with his input and composing. This is the section where I just want to fill it out a little bit in octaves, and I want you to hear it first, OK? So when I'm here with the quintet, Isn't it a little fast? Well, we yeah, really go fast here. So, yeah, but you're already. You're, you're, yeah, we're at 144. Is what was we it, where, to do where, this. where were you in the previous? Uh, Barnes yeah. is a fire hose of energy, alternating rapid fire expressiveness with nuance. Well, and this, by the way, is the hardest part in the whole quintet. Why is that? Because it is. It's definitely write music that's challenging for him, but why, why shouldn't I? He always does it. And then this is where you definitely wanted things faster. Why write something that he can play? <laughs> And then a little bit of a poco rent, and then right into the... Both are passionate and seem to have the kind of undeniable connection of two masters at the top of their game. <laughs> that's, that's good. I love the ending. I love yeah. it. We're very different. I'm way over the top, you know, and he's much more contemplative. I guess that sounds like a good prescription for a rich friendship. We aren't the same, we're different, but we're different in interesting ways. Here we go. At the end of the day, there's more work to do. One last rehearsal. Glass has never heard his piano quintet played by musicians, and the performers are still finding their way with the new work. 
I think it works better just to go ahead and stick with, you know, because we have this nice big retard. So maybe, let's try that again. I think Can we, we try that again? Even the night before the world premiere, changes are still being made to the work. Can we do a first time at 30? It wasn't exactly together at the end. Mm -hmm. Right. You weren't exactly together. Well, <laughs> don't you? You want to take it right at, uh, right at 28? But I think also when you begin that last thing, it should be a little bit louder. I wouldn't make that an eighth note. Yeah, yeah, I like it better with an eighth note. I think so, too. This will go on for a while with a new piece. It could go on for a month, or go on for years. I'm still making corrections to pieces that I wrote years ago. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> well, it's I a see. tiny thing, but. The way a piece ends is huge. First night is like a birth. It's very much like having children for the first time. And people will tell you that. That's something, there's something new in the world that wasn't there before. And that's an astonishing thing when you think about it. It doesn't happen every day. We have witnesses, we have audiences, we have the sharing of that experience, what I call the transaction. The reason they come for the opening night, because that's the night where the highest charge of emotion will be in that night. The audience is a catalyst. It's a, it's a match that lights the fire. Oh, he's a very good player. Doing concert for 50 years, so I have favorite players, and he's one of the best of the best. He is uh, completely engaged in what he's doing. The way he walks on the stage, the way he sits down, the way he plays. This is a man who's doing exactly what he should be, should be doing. Some of it is hard enough that you just have to be thinking about nailing the music. But when you're really solid with the, the music, then you're experiencing it right along with all of the audience. One of the pleasures of living in the life of a performer and life of an artist is the richness on the human side of the friendships. And it goes very deep. Sometimes the feelings you have no other way of expressing. When I hear someone playing my music and I say, oh, I sometimes say, I wish I could play it like that. It means that they found something in music that I didn't know was there. And that can happen. We have lots of other plans. You're going to write your second piano sonata for me. Yeah, I think right. we decided that, didn't we? Well, we yes. talked about it. We did. We'll I, I, it's so easy for me to. I haven't written the first one yet. You see. No, but it's it's well, taken care. It's spoken for. So I'm going to get the second piano sonata. So yeah. probably for your what is it? 85th. Perfect. Let's plan it for your 85th celebration. <laughs> All right. There's time. There's time for more music. I think. <laughs> 